Welcome to Telly Talk, where we talk about what's on the telly, and by that we mean what's on our mind, because we're Telly. I'm Tyler, and I really like the Scream movies. I'm Soul, and I I don't like this movie. <laughs> Today we're talking about Scream 6, the most recent release in the Scream franchise. It is a sequel to Scream 5, starring the same characters. It follows Scream 5, so the characters have moved to college in, I think, New York City. And Ghostface attacks ensue. So, I f- am surprised you don't like this one, because for a number of reasons I thought you would like it. It kind of copies what you said about Scream 5. When we were talking about Scream 5, you were like, the plot of Scream 5 is the killers are really pissed about the stab movies being bad, so they go on this murder spree. And you're like, why do they care about the movies that much that's kind of dumb and this movie the killers have the opposite motive it's who gives a fuck about the movies and everything that happens in this movie kind of is like the anti-movie so i thought you would like that and also i thought you would like the fact that this is the most violent and gory of the scream movies like the kills are there's a, there's like the most kills in this movie they're really bloody gory kills there's a lot of them. There's a lot of, like, tension and, like, anticipation in the kills. So it's, like, some of the kills are, like, scarier than Scream kills usually are. So I, I actually thought you would like this one because of how violent it is and its theme about movies. Some of them, some of the kills were just, like, way too long. Also, Kirby was back, and you liked Kirby, so I thought you would. Yeah, I didn't even realize that like at all until i remembered that you said like weeks ago that she comes back in this movie and then i was like oh that's supposed to be her like I they introduce it as her and then she shows her scar and says charlie gave me this scar like i must have skipped that part they yeah they addressed yeah but no i didn't even i wouldn't have gotten that also why did Um, they let her work on the case because it's time the fbi got involved right no but she's like related to it yeah, I think that's why you're supposed to think that maybe it's, like, she's the killer, and that, like, she tr- lied her way into being there, and there's that little red herring, but they're like, oh, it's Kirby. She would never be the killer. I know. They just want you to think she was, but when they tried to frame her, that was what solidified for me that it was actually the cop dad, because he kept really trying to frame Kirby, and I was like, oh my god, it's totally him. So... This movie is like, who gives a fuck about movies? And it, this movie parallels Scream 2 in a lot of ways. Like, so Scream 5, 6, and 7 were supposed to copy 1, 2, and 3 with the killer motivations. 1 is the boyfriend. 2 is the a parent seeking revenge from the original killer. Um, Just like this one was the dad getting revenge. And also, the second Scream movie had, like, a big theme about, like, whether or not you blame the movies for this. And this one's like, oh, it's not the fucking movies. Um... And then I was thinking about how stupid it is that this movie has three killers. Like, I really hate that this movie has three killers, because I think Scream movies should just always have two killers, because that's just, I like that as a fan. But that's a little bit of the point of this movie, right? Is like, fuck, this this movie is supposed to be, like, not about the movies. So it's like, fuck you for wanting two killers. We're having three killers. And, like, that's the point. And I like that, even though I hate it. Am I making sense to you? <laughs> Weren't there three in... Scream there was three? one killer in Scream 3 had one killer, but in but in my opinion, there were definitely two killers. And then in my secret super headcanon, there were actually three killers. But canonically, Scream 2 had one, maybe two killers. But you like the idea that there were three. Yeah, but it, like it's totally, there totally were not three. I just think that they made Mark so suspicious to the point where it doesn't make sense that if he wasn't a killer, that it's like a plot hole. If he's not a, a third killer in Scream 3. But Scream 3 canonically has one. And then if you look deep enough, there's canonically two. Yeah, so you like the fact that there's three in that one, but not this sure. one? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Because this one canonically has three. And that one, it's just like, oh, you had you fucked up with the plot holes. But this one's like, boo, there's three. But then it's like, yeah, fuck you, fan. There are three. It's not about the movies. This movie, if you, like, watch it on a streaming service, there's, like, a cool promo shot of Jenna Ortega with, like, a scream knife. And it's a really cool shot. I really like it. What streaming platform has this? Paramount Plus. You have that? Yeah. For what? Paramount Plus is a lot of things that I like. Survivor's on it. I really like watching Survivor. Oh. 
<laughs> I think that the setup of this movie is kind of crazy. Going to college in New York City after everything that you just went through is like absolutely wild in my opinion. But th this movie really wanted to go for like a city horror type of vibe, which I think really changed the tone of the series because this series is very much like small town horror. And it's like, ooh, city horror, that's new and exciting. And they did definitely play on some interesting horror elements from the city. And I think it worked really well. But I do think it's crazy as a character choice. But I guess it fits with what they did with Tara's character. Because they kind of had Tara do this arc where, like, she was overprotected for so long that she kind of now has a little bit of freedom and goes off the rails and gets drunk and tries to, like, hook up with asshole guys. So it makes sense that she would want to go to the college in the city. And I like that the whole friend group kind of, like, stayed together, friends, and all went to college together. <laughs> I thought this movie was going to be, like, a killer POV, which was would have been so cool. Oh, from the first kill with the fake out? Yeah. On my first watch, me too. On my very first watch, I wrote down, it's odd for them to show the killer at the beginning, but seeing an alternate perspective could be really fun. And then, no, it was a fake out. But Yeah, that's boring. Uh, I want to see a killer POV. Yeah. Scream just has a really big theme of fake outs. Like, every single Scream movie, Scream as a concept plays on the idea of kind of faking out the audience. So that's it's fun that they did a fake out first kill. But I guess that's also kind of what they did in Scream 4. Um... I thought you would like the first kill because it was a film professor. Did you like her analysis of, well, like, everyone, of sl slasher everyone movies? Well, everyone makes kill. Like, someone's related to film, and at this point, I don't care anymore. <laughs> You're just tired of this franchise. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you why this should be the last movie at the end. The first kill was really fun. There was that bloody blood splatter on the mask and the film professor, and then it's like, oh, the first killer reveals himself? What? That's different. And then, boom, it's fake, and then the ghost face gets killed. Um, I feel like the friendship between the two fake killers, Jason and Greg, has our vibes if we were serial killers. <laughs> what? I thought they were I... a couple. Exactly. A they're not. But like, <laughs> they, they he comes home. It's like, honey, I'm home. And they're this. He's like two film students together who are like planning shit. And it's like, it's totally our vibes if we were serial killers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The fridge shot is nasty. That's that's like the, that just like really sets the vibe of how much gorier this movie is. Is like you see the cut up body in the fridge. I they were that was really cool. they were really quick with like showing the dead bodies. Like I never got to like look at them. Like it would just like flash on oh, the screen. Oh, that's fair. And I'm like, I want to look at them. This movie was really bloody though. Yeah, but I want to like look at the body. Like how did I they agree? Come they just I did like agree. three seconds and then moved on. I was like, no, no, no. No, no, well no. Done. I really like when they kill Jason, the first ghost face, because it, it's like totally, he's like talking about how much fun he had killing this woman, and it's like, oh, it felt like she was like an animal. And then the cop guy, real ghost face, killing him was like, oh, do you feel like an animal, Jason? Like, it's really interesting watching a ghost face get a taste of their own medicine by getting a call and stabbed by a ghost face. Like, that was really cool conceptually. Yeah. Also, I just think, I was thinking about watching this because I watched Scream 1 last night, is the first movie, it's like a really big giveaway that it's Billy because he's carrying a cellular telephone on, on him, and it's hey, like, Billy. oh, why do you have, why do you, the first Scream movie, Billy, oh. the killer? <laughs> um, and it's like, oh, why do you have a cell phone, Billy? It's you. And I think that modern Scream is really interesting compared to that because everyone has a cell phone, so that's like not a factor at all and like anyone could call you at any time in the modern age yeah i think this was a really good movie for chad i think chad had a nice shining moment in this movie getting I he the was gay. girl he, okay he's very bisexual i yeah. think i th i think a lot of pe a lot of people had canon him as bisexual i've heard that the actor who plays him is bisexual but i don't know if that's true and the other prominent character his actor plays is a character on the show Love, Victor, and everyone had canons that character as being bisexual. Basically, this actor just plays very bisexual men. Yeah. He, he, like, he plays it good. Everyone thinks that Chad in this movie is bisexual. He definitely is. Oh, when, yeah. when he was oh, dancing yeah. with that guy, who I think was his roommate, they were like making kissy faces, weren't they? Oh, yeah. I, they, had a little, they had a little bromance going on. Yeah. 
at that house party. The house party's great. You get to see the lesbians on the couch. Yes, my love, Mindy. Mindy, you're you're the love of your life, a lesbian film nerd. Yeah, at one point when they were doing that little like stakeout to track the phone, she was wearing a a sweatshirt that said like Lavender Menace. Oh my god! Which was a I reference noticed... to Lavender Marriages, which was hilarious. That's awesome. I noticed on her cardigan she had a little gay flag patch on it. Yeah, like every shirt related to her being a lesbian, and it was hilarious. That's so. Fun as a character trait. <laughs> Something she said at the party when she was on the couch with her girlfriend was like, the odds of this happening twice to the same person are low. And it's like, no, actually, when it's a ghost face, it, the odds of it happening twice to the same person are quite high. And that's how your uncle died. You know this. Yeah. And then Sam, just, I feel so bad for Sam because she comes from her therapy appointment and her therapist, her therapist is a dumbass. And I'm kind of glad that he dies because like, the fact that he just immediately turns on his own client. And then that whole scene with her therapist was like my, the worst scene in the movie for me. Like her deciding to randomly tell him everything after months of not telling him anything feels really random. And he t she tells him in like the dumbest way possible. And then the therapist is like, oh, I got to report this. And it's like, no, you have you don't have to report this. You need to report something if someone is in danger of harming someone else. But all she said is that she's distressed. That she likes stabbing someone. That's not a danger of harming anyone else. So I just hate I hate the therapist. I hate the acting in that scene and the line delivery. And then she comes from her little therapist thing, and everyone thinks she's a killer psycho on Reddit or whatever. And then she goes to this party and tases a guy. And it's like, damn, she really does a bad job at appearing not psycho. I feel bad for her. Yeah, her her therapist was like really weird. Like he was even acting weird. He was weird, yeah, right? Was, I was when like, I first watched it, he was the first suspect for me. I, like, the very first person I thought it was when I watched the movie was the therapist. Yeah. He was just, like, scared and, like, uncomfortable. And I'm like, you can't do that if you're a therapist. You have to, like, be there. Right? Like, he, he, he was, like, right when she started opening up, he's like, never mind, I can't be your therapist. And it's like, bro, what? Why are you opening up to me? What the fuck? God damn it, what are you doing? I know Talking who you are and I, feelings? I know what you've done, but you saying it to me in your own voice is like, you can't do that. God. And then Tara and Sam are really interesting because they're both not dealing with what happened to them and not processing it, but in entirely different ways. Like, Tara is like, nothing happened. And Sam is like, something happened. I'm not, and I'm distressed. <laughs> and then like, doesn't talk about it in therapy. Yeah. And then it's like, Tara, why aren't you going to see the therapist? And it's like, girl, you're not talking to the therapist either. At least she's going. That's probably Yeah. Nice. Jenna Ortega does such good acting in this movie. Good for her. She's a great actor. She really is. Like, she's so popular that I, 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 hate, I hate to be like, oh my god, she's a great actor. But she really is. No, she, re she really is. I know. Like, she deserves it. She's really good. Tara and Chad have a really cute little slow burn in this movie, and then they, like, finally kiss, and they have, like, all these cute little awkward scenes together. Do you like them? They're cute. Yeah, they're cute. The other relationship in this movie is the lesbians, and then one of them dies. <laughs> yeah, that was sad. Her death was, like, the saddest part of the movie for me, and honestly, it's the... <laughs> I started laughing. No, it actually was scary for me because the way she's screaming, like, I don't want to die, just, like, makes almost, it, like, made me feel like I was dying. Like, it made me scared that I was about to die. <laughs> I like, thought it was funny when she was, like, bouncing around. <laughs> oh my god, no, that, that scene, like, scared me, because it's like she doesn't know if she's gonna <laughs> fall or not, and she's, like, genuinely scared of dying. That was, like, that was horror for me. That's my nightmare. That was hilarious. Oh and my god, it, it, it's kind of like, so I, when the Pete's Dragon, the live action movie came out, like one of the first scenes is this like car crash where it's like Pete and his parents and he's just like in the backseat and they get into a car crash and the car like barrel rolls down a hill and Pete's just like sitting in the backseat just like taking it in. Like, oh, I'm barrel rolling down a hill. And I literally <laughs> could not stop fucking laughing. It was the funniest thing I've ever watched in my life. And I was watching it with 
I forget who, but I think it was one of my family members. And they're like, why are you laughing? And I'm like, this is the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. And they're like, he's gonna die. And I'm like, there wouldn't be a movie if he died in this scene right now. <laughs> Aren't we doing a podcast on Pete's Dragon? The original one. That's like cool. next year. Speaking of the lesbians, right before she dies, there's that little speech that M Mindy gives about how it's the sequel to the requel. And she, so she's talking about why it's probably Ethan, the slutty roommate that I can't remember the name of. What's the slutty roommate's name? Quinn? Yeah, Quinn. They were like, it's either Ethan or Quinn or, or my girlfriend, Annika. And Annika looks so pissed when Mindy actually is like, no, it dead ass could be you. Like, she's like, haha, yeah, it's me. And then she realizes her girlfriend's seriously accusing her, and she's like, hold the fuck up. And then Mindy pegged Quinn and Ethan, like, on the nose. It was like Dewey in the last movie. Like, 100% figured it out right away. Yeah, I don't know why they trust the outlier friends. Well, they, they were on Ethan's ass the whole time. I actually thought it was funny. Like, I feel like I feel like Ethan must have been pissed how on to them everyone was the entire time. Like both of the twins were like, I'm watching you, Ethan. I'm, I'm you're suspicious, man. I'm watching you. I don't know why they kept letting him hang out with them, but I guess, Oh, they want to keep an eye on him. I don't know. I would have put him in holding or something. <laughs> and then around when the girlfriend died is also when Quinn fake died. And I, the first time I watched the movie, I realized they didn't really show Quinn's dead body. Like they just showed like her body being kind of chucked. And then her police dad was like, Oh, she's dead. And I very briefly had the thought of like, Oh, I feel like he, they're faking her death. Like, it's both of them, and they're working together and faking her death, which is what happened. But the first time I was watching this movie, there was so much happening that I totally forgot that I had that theory. So then by the time it was revealed, I was like, oh, wait, I thought of that, but I, like, had forgotten. Around this time is when we meet Sam's boyfriend, and he's, like, kind of suspicious, but he's, like, a really good guy, actually. And it's very, again, parallel Scream 2, where it's like, oh, the boyfriend's a little suspicious, but is a good guy. But unlike Scream 2, I am happy to announce I love that the boyfriend doesn't die. I, I love when it's not the boyfriend and the boyfriend doesn't die. Yeah, me too. You realize it's not him really quickly because through the window, he's trying to help and, like, alert Sam. And it's like nobody's watching him there, but we're seeing this. So it's like it's not like he's putting on a performance because no one else can see this happening but us. So it's, like, totally obviously not him. But I, I really like that he was like, yeah, you can't trust me, I understand that. Like, he was so respectful. No, but that was weird. When he was when he went up to her and was, like, whispering. Also, all the men in this movie had, like, killer Wolverine's voices. And it was, like, weirdly sensual sometimes. But, yeah. Like, the guy, the boyfriend, he was like, you can't trust anyone. You can't trust me. You can't trust your friends. Trust no one. And it was like really weird to the point that he was suspicious. Well, I think it, I think he knew it would have been weirder if he was like, I know, I, I know it's shit right now, but you could still trust me. So he was just like, yeah, I get that you can't trust anyone, including me. Also, like, why didn't he call the police when like he was watching people get killed? I think it was like the police wouldn't have gotten there in time, and he wanted to get help more immediately. Well, he could have been, like, know. on the phone while trying to get their attention. You're right. I think in the moment, it's like, you don't have that logical thought process, and you're just like, fuck, I gotta help. I guess. Around this time also is when Sam, when they find out about, like, the first kill, and Sam is like, oh my god, we gotta get out of the city, and she was so right, but it's like, damn, two oh, of the ghost faces were my, in the room while she thought. was saying that this. That was my thought, that was my thought, that was my thought, that was my thought. You brought oh, it back. So, you're welcome. I knew we'd get there. So I I thought it was really, really smart that they attached her name to the murder so they couldn't leave town. Like, that was so smart. Like, they were almost there, and then they got Dude. the call. And that, Dude. Would, that was and so good. The fact that Quinn was in the room when they were like, oh, let's leave town. I, I Like, I bet she, like, texted her dad. Like, oh, they're about to leave. You should get him. You should call him to the station now. Like... Yeah. I bet it, I bet it was coordinated. You're right. Tying them to it was genius. And I think it's so funny that Tara's in denial and is like, no, this might not have anything to do with us. And I was like, girl, of course it has to do with you. This just so happened to happen in the city you moved to. Like, come on. Yeah. Come on. 
She sent an if, the, if there were other go- history of Ghostface killings, then sure, but they have all been in Woodsboro, California for the last 30 years, and then you moved to Cal- you moved to New York after the the last one and then there's ones there like come on Tara. then you know how i said this was the movie with the most kills yeah that like supermarket scene crazy yeah that was insane i was surprised you picked up the gun and used it i thought they, they were like batman and they don't use guns you know no it was like dude usually it's like ghost faces sometimes use guns at the end of the movie like during the climax but it just in the middle of the movie him using a gun to just kill someone like they were just slaughtering through that supermarket and it was like it was like brutal kills like usually with ghost faces get caught in a public place they kind of scurry away but he was just like okay i'm gonna kill everyone in this fucking store i mean it was just a little small corner store yeah, but like there were like five kills in there. He was he was, ghost faces are always superhuman, but like this movie was on another level of superhuman. What do you think that was that did that the I, police guy? I think it was the policeman. I think it makes sense with him being a grown man and a police officer to be able to carry that out. But we know that the screen movies don't usually follow that logic of like, oh, who would logically be able to physically do this? So I also think it was a police officer because I thought the other people were in the apartment still when this was happening. And it would have been weird if they left. Quinn was definitely still at the apartment. I don't know where Ethan was. He was in class. Like, oh, yeah. He's like, guys, I had econ. And then we're introduced to Kirby, and you're like, finally, they get the FBI involved, because you've been asking, you've been asking this yeah. whole Scream series, when are they getting the FBI involved like now? And it's Kirby! And I, yeah, and then also she was, only one person. Not yeah, like that's a, a little suspicious. And then she's bonding with Mindy, and I'm like, yeah, the lesbians are bonding. And then she's like, I had a crush on Corey Feldman, and I'm like, damn, she likes a man. Yeah, that sucks. I really liked towards the end of the movie when Kirby was like, guys, I'm going to be the only one allowed to have a gun because I'm the only one with a badge here. And that's just the way it is. Like, yeah, girl boss, that shit. Oh, yeah. Do you want to talk about Gail? Oh, Gail. Listen, you know how I've been ranting to you about her reset character development? Yeah. This movie was the worst culprit of all of them with that. Because at the end of Scream 4 and 5 is really like her upturn. Like Scream 4 and 5 are her best character movies. Like, where she's, like, actually a pretty good person in those movies. And then at the end of Scream 5, she is, like, the biggest character growth. And is like, I'm not going to write a book about what happened here. I'm going to write a book about Doobie, a brave police officer who died. And then this movie starts, Scream 6 starts. And guess what she did? Guess what she did? She wrote a book about what happened. And not just that. She did what she did to Sydney and screamed fucking one and villainized Sam and made, like, contributed to, like, the world hating her. You didn't let me guess. Oh, I'm sorry. I got carried away. <laughs> You're so but passionate about Gail. Even though Gail is the worst part of this movie, she's also the best part of this movie because her, her scene where she has a ghost face call, that's the best part of the movie. I love her ghost face scene. Because, because... Gail never has a ghost face scene like in any other Scream movie, like a solo ghost face scene. She's never had a phone call, and she's so badass in that scene. Okay, how do you feel about the fact that she already has a new boyfriend after Dewey died a year ago? Horrible. That was a year I, ago? Probably. I thought it was like at least two. Let me, let me look it up. Because Tara, she didn't feel like a senior, but still after losing like the love of your life, and then not getting to say goodbye, and then instantly moving on. Okay, and the fact that she did not give a fuck when her boyfriend died either. Like, she just, like, walks past his dead body, like, not even, like, flinching. Seeing the boyfriend get grabbed in the background while she's on the phone is, like, a really cool shot. Bro, her already having a new boyfriend, I hate it. Like, she does not give a fuck about him. But yeah, she finally has her moment. Like, this call is her time to shine, and she was so smart. Like, she kept him talking, and then, like, hung up and called him back, and and was like, hold, please. Like, that was so fucking funny. And then the ghost face finally gets the best of her, but then she's like, fuck you. And I really thought she died. Like, they didn't have the balls to kill off Gale. I, she's coming back for Scream 7. Um, but I, I did think she died. I'm surprised they brought Kirby back because she was like, yeah, I was dead for four minutes. Four minutes? Four minutes? 
four minutes. Can you even be dead for that long and be brought back? I guess. I but guess like, they, she did. That's this a long movie, time. Keep the, a big problem people have with Scream Six is Scream Six is really cowardly about killing off its characters. It doesn't kill off Gail and the twins. Both get stabbed like within an inch of their life and don't die, and both of the sisters make it out. Like, like Scream Six is really pussy about killing off its characters, and that's like a big problem people have with it. I like that the emphasis was, yeah, anyone could die, but then the core four didn't die. It's the same thing that happened in Scream 3. Randy was like, if you're watching this, this means you're in the third act of a trilogy, and that means anyone can die, including you, Sydney, and then none of them died in Scream 3. Yeah. I like the fact that Gail kept her gun in a safe, but I thought it was so funny she couldn't unlock it. Like, if you should keep your gun in a safe. That's, like, a very smart thing to do. Good job, Gail. But, like, if you, if you need to unlock that shit in an emergency, please make it something you can unlock quickly in an emergency. I mean, it did look like a four-button, like, password i thought the killer had changed the password that would have been so cool it was the boyfriend all along yeah i'm surprised gail's never had a boyfriend who was the killer like imagine that just makes sense as a plot maybe that's a scream 7 plot dude i figured out the plot of scream 7 before it's even out it's gonna be gail's boyfriend next boyfriend gail's next boyfriend after her last two just died yeah yeah okay speaking of that when I was watching this movie, basically very early, my first time watching it, my first time watching this movie, very early on, I figured out that it was Ethan and the dad and the sister, but I never thought there would be three killers. So I was getting myself really, really confused. And then I kind of gave up on that theory because I couldn't make it make sense with like which two it would be like and how they would know each other and be working together. So I, I kind of like forgot about that theory and gave up on it. And then I was like, okay. Based off of the process of elimination, I think it's Gale. Like, I made up an I was so confused my first time watching this, and I created an entire theory for why it's going to be Gale. I was like, I don't know which two people in this group it could be working together. And I was like, this Ethan boy is so sweet. It's probably him again, like it was Richie, because Richie was really sweet. And then I was like, or it could be the roommate who had them go to the police station, and her dad's the cop. And that's, like, suspicious. And then... I was like, I don't know which two people could be working together. And then I was like, oh, I bet. What if Gail blames them for Doobie dying? So Gail's taking revenge on them. And then I was like, I'm doing process of elimination. It's got to be, it's got to be Ethan and Gail. And then I was like, e okay, I guess it's not Gail. Ethan's the only one left. But he make, but then when Gail got attacked, he the ghost face was like, you finally cracked under the pressure. What if it's you? You being a ghost face would be a great twist. And I was like, dude, that's what I'm saying. The ghost face who attacked Gail read my mind and said what I was thinking. And then I was like, I was thinking maybe the movie was going to make it Sam. Because I was like, everyone... I hoped it wasn't. I was like, it's going to piss me off if it's Sam, but everyone thinks it's Sam. So then you as the audience don't think it's Sam, and you know she's innocent, so then what if it's actually Sam to throw you off? But that would be really dumb. And then I was like, why does everyone think it's Sam? Because there were like six survivors from Screen 5 who could all vouch that it wasn't Sam. So like, why is no one believing Sam when there are so many survivors from Screen 5 when there were not this many survivors in other Scream movies, but people believe the final girl. And then I was like, okay, what if Sam staged this whole thing to clear her name? And then I was like, well, that doesn't make any fucking sense. And then I was like, are they going to make it what you expect or what you don't expect? I can't predict it. And then it was the train scene. And I was like, everyone is on the train and we know where everyone is. So who is this ghost face? Like, it's got to be the police guy. And then I was like, what if the police guy kill? I forgot that I figured out that the daughter faked her death. So I was like, what if the policeman killed his daughter? Because he's like, he was doing that thing where he was crazy over protecting her because the daughter mentioned that after her brother died. I didn't put together that the brother was Richie yet, yet. And I was like, the brother died. He's trying to like overprotect her, but he, he's he's scared of something happening to her. So then he just kills her. So I was, and then I, and then the policeman calls and is like, oh, it's Kirby. And then I was like, yep, 100% the male policeman trying to frame Kirby. I knew it was him. And then I was like, well, if it's him and Ethan, that's really fucking weird. How does he know Ethan? Turns out Ethan's his secret other son, but he was like, all my kids are dead. So how was I supposed to know that? And then and then I remembered I had the theory earlier that Annika, not Annika, Quinn faked her death. 
and then it was revealed that it, the the everyone was Richie's family, and I was like, wow, that's crazy. And then I remembered earlier in the movie, the the police dad did say that he would kill anyone who fucked with his family. So it's like, oh my god, it's all coming together. He is killing the people who fucked with his family, his son Richie, and yeah. I think you need to take a long deep breath. <sighs> <sighs> So that that was the process I went through as I watched the movie for the first time. Who did you think it was? You were usually really good at guessing it. Um, I thought it was Ethan. And um, when the police guy was like, "Oh, my family, my family's dead," I was like, "Oh, he's related to someone who died before." So then I also thought there he was a killer, but I wasn't yeah. sure. I don't know. Because his daughter, Quinn, was like, oh, my brother died a year ago. And then it turns out the brother was Richie, but you don't know that. Um, but basically, I figured out that it was Ethan, Quinn, and the policeman. But then I couldn't figure out how that fit into two killers and which two it would be and how it would work. So then I was like, never mind, it's Gail. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you know how Scream 5 and 6 parallel 1 and 2 with like it being the boyfriend and then the parent? Yeah. Well, Scream 3 changes Scream 1 and, like, goes back and, like, changes something from the past. So, and Stu from Scream 1 is the only ghost face that we don't see get, like, shot in the head. So a lot of people theorize that he's still alive and he was going to come back and be the killer in Scream 7. And that would fit with the fact that Scream 3 changes Scream 1. This would be Scream 7 changing th Scream 1. And then a different approach would be Scream 7 is going to have Sam be the killer. Um which I don't like, but, like, that would, like, go back and change, like, her arc or something. I don't know. Anyway, Scream 7 is now going to not have the sisters in it, and so I think they should just end it here, because this movie just ties all the Scream movies together, right? Like, they have the artifacts from all the other Scream movies. It ends on a good note for the sisters. It's, like, really metaphorical with... Um, like Sam dropping the ghost face mask and walking away, like leaving her father behind. And Sid you find out that Sydney's safe and like all the legacy characters are dealt with. Like Gail has her moment, Dewey's dead, Sydney's safe, Kirby was brought back, Judy was brought back. Like they should end it here for at least another decade until they have something new to say. Because if they don't have the sisters in Scream 7, like it's so unnecessary for a Scream 7 to be made right now. Because then you're just going to be making up a totally new plot, and then it's just a crash grab, and I think it's going to be stupid. Like, this movie, like, the ending of the climax had the, like, burning of Richie's film in the background, and that was a really cool shot. And then it ends with, like, a ghost face mask on the ground and, like, them walking away from it. Like, that's a great ending to the Scream series, and I think they should just end it here. I agree. I wanted to say something all the way back ten minutes ago. When we're I'm talking sorry. about Gail in the apartment. I just want to just say that my favorite line in the whole movie was when Gail was said, can you hold please? And then the guy that went, was, what? That <laughs> was, was really so funny. fucking funny. Dude, That that is my like, favorite part of the whole movie. Can you hold please? What? Psh, psh, psh. Like, it works. She's a genius. Smart. No, it was. Like, that was Gail's moment. And also, right before that, there was that whole scene in the van, and Mindy is like, stab, 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 no more Randy. That cracked me up. And then and then they steal the cop car, and the police dad is like, that's a cop car. You can't steal a cop car. You can't steal anything, but they're doing it anyways. Oh, speaking of Gail, um, when they're, like, touring the theater that Gail finds for the first time, there's this shot of Gail looking at all the books she wrote about like the killings and then it then it cuts to her looking at dewey's stuff and i think that's really interesting like thematically because that really is like the two wolves inside of her right like between being a good person and a bad person is like oh do i write these shitty books about people and like make money off of death or do or like do i learn from this good man that i knew who loved me and it's like that was just a cool shot i thought it was stupid 
that they were planning in their whole big group how they were going to trap the ghost face because they gotta know at least like they were doing that plan with the outsiders there and it's like come on you have to know that someone here is the killer why are you planning your trap in a large group i have no idea and then, then it's Halloween, and they're going on that train, and I had a thought that it would be really funny if, because it's Halloween, the ghost face knows that everyone will be a ghost face dressed up, and then that's what they're looking for. And so, then to trick them, the ghost face dresses up as something else and does a little sneak attack, and the ghost face would never attack in anything other than a ghost face costume, but I think it would be so funny. And then I was thinking about what you said about how they gotta ban these ghost face masks, and then the fact that on the train, there were so many ghost face masks... And it's like, damn, they really got to ban that shit. They were, that was distressing for them. Yeah, why haven't they done that? I don't know. It's been like, what, 30 years or something? Yeah, why haven't they done that? And then it was right next to someone in a Michael Myers mask. So then it's like, yeah, the stab movies are horror movies, just like the Halloween movies are horror movies. So people are just wearing the mask because it's a horror movie. But like, it's based off of real events. And I think they got to ban that shit. Anyway. The train scene is shot so beautifully. The lighting, mwah, the lighting, the lights flickering on and off. It's so scary as the ghost face gets like closer and like it gets your adrenaline pumping and you don't know like who it is. And Ethan's just there watching, even though he's really suspicious. And then he comes over to help. And then it's like her mouth gets covered as she gets stabbed. So no one can hear her scream. And it's like the train scene is really well done. And also you get to see Mindy's lock screen and it's a really cute cat. I like the train scene too, but it was really long. It was, and also, I feel like this movie had some plot holes, and one of them was, I don't get how Ethan saved Mindy on the subway, and then, like, he could have just, like, let the ghost face kill her, because then he wouldn't have to clear his name from Mindy, but I guess he wanted to show everyone else he was innocent, and then Mindy was like, oh my god, I was wrong about you being the killer, and then at the end of the movie, Mindy comes running, and is like, oh my god, it was Ethan, and, like, how'd she figure out it was him when she thought it wasn't him because he saved her i have no idea that confused me and then i think it's weird that gail like figured out is like i do so much good research and she figured out like their like little like theater that was bought but she didn't figure out that like richie's dad was the cop (laughs) like she wrote a book on this she didn't realize richie's dad was a cop i don't know they're i don't know this, I just feel like this movie had some plot holes with, like, the killer. Like, there were three, they had three killers, so you think it would be, like, easy to not have plot holes with the killers, but I still feel like they could have done better with it making it make sense. Anyway, we're at the climax now, and, and Chad gets this other, this is, like, the third best part of the movie. Chad gets double attacked by two ghost faces and gets, like, stab the fuck up and they do this double knife swipe that is the sickest thing i've ever seen that was so fucking cool and then you see sam in the mask and she just like shoots him dead and then instead usually you shoot a ghost face in the head but she stabbed him right in the eye there was a scene with the sisters where like she dropped tara climax of this movie so sick so cool oh yeah i didn't watch it the core four is really cute chad's like we're the core four and they're they're all living together they're trauma bonded but it's so unrealistic that they all live in this movie because the twins get so stabbed and then danny tries to join in the boyfriend and is like we're the core what and that was really goofy and then the end where it's like that shows richie's film and it's like everything's burning and they're walking through the the like projector and it's like written and directed by richie i thought that was a really cool shot i didn't see it that's okay. You would like the ending, I think, if you watched it. I think the go- the three ghost face didn't have a very concise plan because they left so many survivors because Gail and Mindy and Danny all, like, they wanted to frame Sam, right? They wanted Sam to put on the mask and, like, frame her and, like, like finish the job or whatever. But those three weren't even in the cinema, like, during the final scene. So they would be able to vouch that like it probably wasn't sam and it like it's really suspicious that his do- like how are they going to go about faking his daughter's death like were they just going to pretend she was dead forever was she going to take on a new identity like i just feel like their plan wasn't very well thought through no. like was he also going to kill the rest of his children maybe to like erase suspicion i don't know also why didn't nobody else know 
who like Ethan's related to. Right? Like if the like, cop says, Oh everyone's dead. And they and how did Quinn figure out how to live with them? Because they said their newspaper ad for a roommate was anonymous. How'd they know it was the how'd Quinn figure out it was them? No idea. Like I just feel like this movie has a lot of really small plot holes that aren't a huge deal, but it just it doesn't make a ton of sense. Which is yeah. why I had a hard time figuring out who the killers were. Okay, now that you've seen all the Scream movies, how do you how would you rank them? Like order of favorite to least favorite? I have no idea. You really liked four. You kind of like one. I don't remember how you felt about two and three. What was four? <laughs> four was the one with the ones you wanted to fuck, Charlie and Kirby. Oh, right, right, right. And it was the cousin. Yeah. You told me four was your favorite. Was it? Really? And then you said one would be your next favorite. I like, don't you said, remember liking it. Really? You told me you liked it because Charlie and Kirby were hot and you, you didn't yeah, mind the sense. plot. Like there weren't a ton of plot holes and it was like kind of girl boss. And I like think, film bros, yeah. You I told me I that do. you didn't like the acting in four, though. You yeah. liked the acting in five better. Yeah. I remember your reactions better than you I mean, do. I, I, I think I'll say one, then four, then five, then that's it. You don't care about two, three, or six? No. That's so valid. I watched Scream 1 last night at, like, a showing, and then tonight my living center is doing a drive-in movie at, like, a field, and there was a poll for, like, a bunch of different movies, and Scream 1, so I'm gonna go watch Scream again. And watching it last night, and, like, a big screen with, like, loud audio, I really, I, like, I was like I was watching it for the first time again, like, I noticed so many details I've never noticed. You get me. Even, yeah! I noticed so many details and, like, throwaway lines I never noticed before, even though I've seen it so many times. And I, I'm so serious. It's such a funny movie. Scream 1 is hilarious. And, like, it's so well written. Scream 1 is so good. So Scream 1's my favorite. It's, like, all the actors are just... It's just so classic. And then I really enjoy 5, um, which makes sense because it parallels 1. So I'm going to go one five four. Two, six, three. Three pisses me off. Two is really good. Two and six are kind of tied. I like different things about them. Two is like, two is fine. It's just like nothing super excites me about it. Two is like, two is there. I forgot um, what two was, and that's why it's not on there. Two is when they're in college. Yeah. Which, just like this one, this is why this one parallels two. And six, is, six, I like the six, the one we just watched. Like, there were a lot of things I like about it, but there were also enough things that I didn't like about it. It was like, oh, I didn't like the killers. I think that's what really gets me about six is that I, I, the killer, the ghost faces are kind of stupid in six, when in one and five, I really, really like the ghost faces. And in four, I think it's a cool motive. And then two has better killers than six, so that's why two would be above six for me, I guess. Um, but I, I, I do like things about this movie, but there are just other little things I don't like about it. It was really fun on a first watch. Like, watching this movie for the first time was really fun, because I was so into the whodunit, but I had seen so many Scream movies that I didn't know if they were going to go what was obvious or what wasn't obvious, because it, like, switches all the time. Who is your favorite character? Um, Mindy. Mindy. And Kirby? Gail. Gail. I like Gail from the fifth, 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 sixth movie. And I really yeah. like Gail's solo scene in this movie. I really hate her, the fact that she wrote a book about what happened in this movie. I like Gail in four, five, and six. Yeah, four. I love Gail in four and five. And I love her solo scene in six. Gail is better in four, five, and six than one, two, and three, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. Character development. I liked having Kirby back. Kirby was chill in this movie. I think the twins really shined in this movie. Mindy and Chad just had a great, a great film. They both should have died, but they didn't. They were just running around. Like Mindy was running around like nothing happened to her. And Chad loaded on the ambulance and kisses his girlfriend. So good for him. Chad stays winning. I thought, I thought it was really weird and just like out of nowhere that they brought back Kirby. In the other movie, we don't even know if she died or lived or not. I know. That's why this movie, like, I think tries to clarify that, like, she survived. But yeah, it was weird. They probably just wanted to bring another character back. And they were like, oh, Kirby's in the FBI now. Yeah, that was weird. I agree. What are you rating this movie? I'll give it a three. 
I'm give it a three and a half. Like I like it. I don't love it. There were some problems, but it's it's shot really nicely. There's some really nice like colorings going on. It gets city horror down pretty well. The train scene's cool. The Gale solo scene's cool. The double kill is cool. They had some good shit going on. Some problems as well. Three and a half. Thank you guys for watching this Tiny Talk episode. We have plenty of other episodes that you can go watch, and we have other videos you can go watch. We have sketches and gaming and solo videos of each other. Tyler does commentary videos, and I do gaming videos. I do some gaming videos, too. Good luck with life. I'll see you next week. Goodbye. Goodbye.